right, we're back here. Uh, episode two of uh, The Glue Guys. I'm Landon Lucas. That's Richard Lucas. And uh, welcome back. Second, second episode. We've made it. Wait, we made it? We've only been through one episode. How, do, how have I, you made it if you've been to one episode? You have to do it multiple it. ones. We, we made it to episode two. So oh, we made take that okay. as a, as, yes. So, so how are you? We got, you? The, how, same, how we got the same jacket. I think it's almost kind of like the same, the same it, thing. It kinda. is very, very similar. Yeah. Uh, how, how is everything with you? Every, everything good midweek? Yeah, everything's good. Everything's good. You know, it's working for the weekend. Um, you know, I'm in insurance, so uh, that's my day job. So uh, when I get to do this kind of fun stuff, it, it's uh, the highlight of my week. So I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, today we have a fun show. We'll be uh, talking with Coach Roberts a little bit, going over the last couple games, going over the big Mizzou game that's coming up this weekend. Um, we're going to do another top five list today. We're going to do the biggest rivalries in sports. Yep. Um, and then we'll be meeting with the famous uh, KU drummer, uh, that some of you may know, uh, Donovan, and uh, and then we'll finish up with a little segment that we're going to be doing called uh, subbing in or subbing out, and we're going to go over that wild uh, coach at uh, Arkansas Pine Bluffs who uh, made his uh, players run during a timeout against Iowa State and, and cover that a little bit. Um, but while we wait for uh, Coach Roberts, uh, what are your thoughts so far on uh, the last few games since the last time we talked and uh, we got two big, big wins. You know, how are you feeling about Kansas basketball and uh, coming off the loss in Orlando? Yeah, you know, I can tell you that, um, you know, the game, some of the games that I saw when, like when I was watching the St. John's game, the, what I loved about it is the fact that it's all about defense, right? And they jumped right on them right away defensively. Uh, you know, St. John's made a little bit of run here and there, but in the end, it was, it was all about the defense. And that's, that's Bill Self basketball, right? It's Kansas basketball is, you know, if you don't play defense, you don't play. Um, yeah. And so that, that to me was something that uh, was, was impressive for sure. Yeah. And uh, going into, you know, this big rivalry game, a lot of times you look over uh, the game right before it, they did a good job at not doing that and, and handling business in uh, what's now known as the T-Mobile center. Did you know that they changed it from the sprint center to the T-Mobile center now? So. I, I, I didn't know that. I, you know what? That's what, you know what? That's why my rates keep going up on T-Mobile. Oh, that, that's them. what it is. Man, they need to consult with us first before they, they start making these big contracts like that. Right, right. Well, I mean, I was surprised because now they have the one in uh, Las Vegas for yeah. uh, all the big UFC fights and whatnot. Um, and then, you know, they, they have the one in Kansas City now, too. Speaking of Las Vegas and UFC fights, are you watching this weekend? Of course. You know, I only, I'm like, listen, my UFC watching and viewership is just like when the lottery gets big. Like, I don't play the lottery ever, but when it gets like a hundred million or more, I'll swing by and I'll drop off, you know, I'll buy a $2 ticket here and there. But it's the same way with yeah. UFC. I can't watch, I can't watch it too much, you know, normally, but big fights, I'll drop some coin for that. Yeah, there's some there's some big ones. Amanda Nunes, and then uh, later on the Poirier fight. It'll, it'll be fun. I'm, I'm it'll looking fun forward to it. Um, well, let's go ahead and let's let's get started. I want to go ahead and do this uh, this first segment. It's a new one that we're going to be doing. It's called uh, subbing in or subbing out. And so uh, what we're going to do is I'll bring something up, and I want to get your opinion. Are you in? Or are you out for this? And so let's go ahead and get right to it with this uh, this coach from Arkansas, Prime. Pine Bluffs, which I've never heard of that school before. I don't know if you have, um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> he he, uh, he had his players running against Iowa State during a timeout. So I want to know, are you subbing in or are you subbing out uh, of, of this tactic that he had uh, for his players? So you may, I'm going to be probably a little different than what you may think, because I'm an old okay. guy. You know, and so you probably think I've been in coaching. So you probably think that that oh, old man probably loves this stuff. But I can't tell you how much I hate this. I I, I thought it was ridiculous. I mean, it really it was not. So what he was trying to do, right, was was to get them to 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 motivate. This was his tactic for motivating, right? Um, 
but it's this that's a very old school way of doing it um and it's like to me it's like why why it, it was too it was too public it you know when you're a team you it's like a family if somebody comes and visits your family are you sitting there arguing with people, your family in front of strangers no when the, as soon as the door closes you may turn around and start and start you know cussing somebody out but to me to try and do something like that in in, in a full arena I would have been even okay with the game is over with and everybody's is leaving. And I say, no, 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 we're not going to the locker room. We're going to stay here and we're going to practice or we're going to stay here and we're going to run. I'm, I'm even okay with that. But during a time now, people eating their popcorn, they see kids doing lines to me that that overstepped the bounds. And it just, it was all about him, that coach. And it was all about him trying to show how, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get these guys right. Dude, take care of that behind the scenes. You don't need to put those kids out there like that uh, on, on the court and display like that. So I'm so you're, what is you're subbing I'm out. Subbing, I'm subbing, subbing out on out. that one. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. Um, and I thought the same thing. You know, uh, publicly, that's not the time or place. And I remember, you know, Coach Self, uh, he's one to chew you out. Um, but what he'll do, and, and I don't, sometimes if it gets too quiet in the gym, you'll hear it regardless. But what he'll do is he'll cover his mouth while he's chewing you out. Uh, and the reason for that is because, um, you know, obviously, like you said, the whole crowd doesn't need to be hearing, uh, yeah. you know, that conversation. This is it's a personal matter, a family, you know, feeling of, of that team and, and uh, relationship with the players and the coach. And so, you know, I agree in the sense that uh, there's a better time, there's a better place. I know some people... Uh, might say, oh, you know, uh, publicity, you know, for uh, the, the school or whatnot. But there's there's better ways to get it than that. And so I'm going to go ahead and sub out as well and say uh, that should have been done at a different time, not in the middle of the yeah. game against Iowa State on, I, I believe it was a national televised uh, game. So Yeah, and, and that's not the publicity that you want. Because, yeah. again, you know, Arkansas Pine Bluff is not probably in the um, – the race to land a bunch of really top level recruits. Um, and yeah. so for them, they got to get kids that are probably local, probably solid, uh, that they can uh, kind of coach mm -hmm. them up and get them on, on, on the court. Well, if I see that kind of action, you know, as a kid, I'm like, I, yeah, I, I'm yeah. not playing, especially kids today. I mean, you know, I mean, Bobby Knight used to, to cuss you throw out chairs. and <laughs> throw chairs, right? I mean, I, one of my really good friends, Matt Dover, uh, he was in the movie Blue Chips. He was on that, you know, part of that Indiana team. And I'm telling you, he told me, he told me some stories about Bobby Knight, mm -hmm. right? But none of that stuff flies now. It just doesn't. And I get it. I know you want to be old school. And again, that's why I thought you thought I would would love this kind of stuff. I thought you might. But I thought you might. I, yeah, right. You know, so you're probably like, oh man, he's an old man. <laughs> so yeah. I just, I just figured, man, I just, I saw that, and it just, my first instinct was like, man, this is just. This is not the way to do it. Nice. Well, um, I, I think Norm is, is ready for us. So we'll bring in our okay. four, first guest, uh, Coach Roberts, and uh, get, get talking with him. There he Coach, is. Yeah? Can you hear there us? He is. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, hey Jeff, Jeff Goodman wants me to start this off by saying that you're no Mike Anderson. So I don't know what that means to you, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he said it'll get you riled up for this. Hey, Jeff, Jeff likes to hurt my feelings. It's okay. I've known him for a while. What's up, big fella? What's How going you on, doing, Coach? Good, good, man. You guys look great. How's the family and everything? I know uh, I know. Nico's been doing well. I see what he's doing. How's the rest of the family? Everybody's doing good. You know, Justin's still playing. He did that six-year yeah. plan. So he's at Niagara. Oh, plan. okay. So he's on the Mitch Lightfoot route. <laughs> he's on the Mitch Lightfoot deal. I said, hey. There ain't no jobs out there for you right now anyway. So you might yeah. as well go chase girls and enjoy yourself. <laughs> so he's doing well, good. Well, it's nice seeing you again. I know it's been a while since we uh, we talked last. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, but I want to know, you know, uh, getting right into basketball, because I know you got a smart basketball mind, and I, you know, I want to hear some of your thoughts. What, so far this season, uh, would you say – uh, you're happiest about with the team and most excited about? And what would you say uh, has been 
the thing that you know moving forward needs to improve in order for this team to to get where they need to go? Well, I'm happy with uh, our ability to play fast. We can play fast and we can score the ball. You know, we haven't shot it great yet, but, you know, I think once we get Jalen Wilson going, that's going to help us out a lot because he can really spread the floor. Before he had to sit out some games, he was playing really good. He was terrific in practice. So he's just trying to get back in the groove. I think once we get him back playing the way he's capable, uh, we'll be real happy about that. Um, I think on the defensive end, we've gotten really good. Like we started off the game the other night against UTEP and we were fantastic. I mean, they couldn't score and we played good. And then what happens, you remember, we used to talk about this all the time, man, is when you start scoring easy, you start forgetting the other end of the floor and you Mm -hmm. start relaxing on that end. And we've done that too much where we score really easy and then we don't defend the way we're supposed to. And I think we've got to mature from that standpoint and do a better job with that. I think we've got to rebound the ball better uh, because that's going to be really, really important for us down the line. And Jalen Wilson helps a lot with with that. Mm -hmm. So so I had a couple. Hey, Coach, good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, And uh, and I thought you you were spot on about uh, the last game, but I also thought, you know, against St. John's as well, I thought you guys jumped out. Uh, right, right from the beginning, and 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 had a nice little lead, and and that you know they started to come back a little bit, just like you said, mm-hmm. um, but in the end, it was I thought the defense was was holding tight. Um, but I did have a question about um, Remy Martin. You know, I saw him when he was out here in the Pac-12 uh, when he was at ASU, and what what has he brought to the team? You think for, for you know that, what kind of experience, and you know what what does he bring to to the KU team? Well, I would tell you that Remy's really smart. Sometimes he's thinking he's smarter than everybody else in the room, too. But he's really smart and he knows the game. He really does. What he has done is he's brought an infectious energy about him when he's on the talk on the court. He does a great job of talking positively with the guys, even when we make a mistake or he makes a mistake, whatever. Come on, come on, come on. Next play. We're okay. We're okay. He's very, very good at that. He's got. Great anticipation skills, both offensively and defensively. What happens to him, though, at times is he gambles and he wants to gamble too much. And Landon knows this coach doesn't like his point guards gambling. He does not like that. And so he's gotten better over the last few games defensively, not doing that as much. The other thing is, I think sometimes Remy gets in his mind what he wants the game to play out to. And that means like last night, he was open for a bunch of shots and he just said, I want to give assist tonight. I want to just pass it. And he's got to understand that. No, 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 no. You take what the defense gives you. Okay. If you're open, you got to play the right way. Like coach said to the whole team yesterday, we've got to play. Even if you got a big lead, we've got to play like we're trying to win the next big game to go further in the NCAA tournament to win a championship. You got to play the right way in order to win, even if you got a big lead or something like that on a team, on the team. And and he said that to Remy, Hey, in big games, you're going to take that shot. You're not going to pass the ball like that. So do what you would do in the regular games. When he had that uh, behind the back pass, I was, I was bummed that David missed that layup because that was was one of the best pass I've seen. Yeah, it was unbelievable because when he threw it, I believe me, there was a couple of people on the bench saying, what the, you know, <laughs> that would have been. <laughs> and it was a heck of a pass and a heck of a catch by yeah. David. He did a great job yeah. of catching the ball too, but then he just didn't finish. That would have been, that would have been on Sports Center, no doubt. For sure. Well, speaking of David, I mean, I know, uh, you know, I've got in a, uh, some questions about him. Um, you're with him every day. You're working with the bigs there at, at Kansas. What are your... Um, you know, conversations with him like, and, you know, how are you trying to um, kind of mold and shape him for this, this uh, stretch the rest of the season and, and try to kind of get out of that early season slump that he was in to, to begin things. David, David is a little similar to you in that he's smart. He's very intelligent. He's very articulate. And David kind of overthinks at times where you kind of process things and see how 
David overthinks it. He wants to be great, but he like uh, he wants to do everything great all in the same exact moment. And it's like, wait a second, you're on defense now, you're not on offense. Like, calm yeah. down. So, you know, all the time, you know, I would tell guys, be quick, but not in a hurry. Sometimes he's in a hurry to make something happen. Once he gets in a hurry, he becomes off balance. Once he becomes in a hurry, he overruns a downing of the ball screen. Once he gets in a hurry, he tries to rebound with one hand instead of two, you know? So like, even we met the other day and we talked and all I did was show him video of him rebounding with two hands against St. John's. And I said, look at that. And I replayed it, replayed it, replayed it. And I said, man, that's good. Look how good that is. Look how oh, good I love that. that. <laughs> I get your point, coach. So he, he overthinks things a little bit. He's got, and then I'll be honest with you, I used your podcast the other day. I saw it on Twitter and I used it because I, you said the perfect thing. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. And before the game, you know, like I used to do with you, before the game, I always walk over to the big guy and say, hey, man, game starts with the bigs. Let's go. And I talked to him that way. And now he said to me, keep it simple, coach. Keep it simple. And I said, love yep. it. And then he played good. And I said, just keep it simple. Do what you do. Don't try to overdo things or be too quick or too much in a hurry. So. Those are the conversations I'm having with him. That's great. That, that's great. And, uh, and so you can just pay us later, coach. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, <laughs> so I, exactly. I had a question about, you know, the, this past couple of years, this, you know, this is unprecedented stuff, right? No, no, nobody ever thought that, that sports would be shut down like it was. And uh, so all of a sudden you have a, a circumstance where one of your distinct advantages is probably not probably the greatest place to watch a college basketball game in mm -hmm. Allen Fieldhouse, and now that's stripped away. How, how did how did coach and you and your staff handle playing in empty arenas and things like that last year? It was the weirdest weirdest situation of all time. It, it, yeah. it really was, and you know, as the year went on, then they started letting some fans in. We got it up to twenty five hundred. But it was, you're sitting there and playing. I remember we're playing Creighton, and there's barely anybody. I mean, we had probably like 1,100 in the gym at that time. And it was like, what is going on? And you were trying to get some type of energy. in the But what it did do was it made your players have to focus in and help each other and talk and all that stuff. What it was bad for coaching, though, know, is, and Landon would notice. They could hear everything. Is, you can hear everything. Yeah, right. <laughs> everything. You can hear everything. So if a guy shot a bad shot and you were like, are you kidding me? Everybody <laughs> heard you saying, are you kidding me? You know, what? I, so it was almost like you had to be careful as a coach not to say so because the referees could also hear if you were saying something to them. So uh, it was a weird situation. Uh, I was happy the kids got to play. But it, it was it was so awkward and it took away a lot of advantages. We actually had more fans at our games than most of the other teams in the league did. But uh, it was really really hard. Just just weird, eerie, weird. Well, going from that to to this game coming up on Saturday, uh, it's going to be obviously a wild uh, atmosphere, bringing back that rivalry. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on, you know, that? And I, I saw Jamari and I think Sharon came in and talked to the team as well. You know, what were some things that were said and how is the team feeling about this, uh, you know, big matchup that is coming back? Well, you know, I, I've been around the Missouri deal, not here, one year here at Kansas. I was here for the Missouri-Kansas rival, rivalry, but also we had it when we were at Illinois. Illinois and Missouri mm -hmm. played each other every year at Christmas. So, so I've hated Missouri for a long time, even though I wasn't here at Kansas. So there, there is, there is a, a, and I think this is what makes basketball great is that Missouri hates us and we hate them and let's get it on. Let's play. And, and I think the rivalry hasn't gone on. I think for nine years, they said, I think it is eight or nine years. We played an exhibition game a couple of years ago. And I'm telling you, Landon, it was the coolest thing. It was a cool that yeah. we played it in Kansas City to raise money, I think, for the mm -hmm. hurricane victims and those things. And, and 
I'm telling you, the place was packed. I think they raised over about $1.8 million. And it was so cool how both teams were going at each other and how it was. So I, I think it'll be great. I think the guys like it. I can't tell you exactly what Sharon and them said because this is a PG type deal. <laughs> but, but those guys were heated, and I'm sure that day will be pretty heated. Well, I was actually at the um, the last game that was played. That was my visit. And I was <laughs> there. Um, it was me, um, some guys you may remember, uh, Shabazz Muhammad, yep. uh, Tony Parker, the big fella, uh -huh, and, then, uh, Julius, and then Julius Randle. We were all there on a visit. Uh -huh. And um, I remember uh, at halftime, I was so sad because not only were they losing, but that meant on my visit that night wasn't going to be fun. <laughs> you know, and I was ready to, you know, go and, you and, were and, and I'm like, I'm like, like, man, like a kid. You, know, uh, you know, and at halftime, I remember coach chewed them out and I'm, and you know, I'm sitting in the corner of the, the locker room with the other recruits. I'm like, man, this is about to be a bad night and everything. And then they came out the second half, came back. Ended up being one. I mean, I've been a part of some great games at the field house, but yeah. the atmosphere, the pregame hype video, I know they're going to have a great one Saturday, yeah. but the pregame hype video they, they used for that game mm -hmm. and got the crowd all into it and stuff. I mean, that was uh, you instantly feel years worth of that rivalry come back, uh, you know, at that one moment. And then that whole game was just electric. Um, and then I'll tell you what, that night was a fun night celebrating that win. So I, I was happy they got it done and, and, uh, and finished the job, but I'm looking forward to watching this Saturday and for this to, you know, uh, be renewed mo moving forward. It, 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 it'll be, it'll be great. It'll be, a, it'll be, a, a hopefully a lot of fun. Hopefully we'll play well. Uh, we know we'll get their best shot. I know they've, they've lost, they've dropped a couple of games, but that doesn't matter when you're playing in a rivalry game. And if we don't come ready to play, They'll play well. We got to make sure that we make them play bad. But I also think it's a chance for our fans to get back in our place and have that place get as loud as it normally gets. You know, you've been here for the Kentucky games and, and that type of stuff where there's 5,000 people standing outside and they had to let them in early because they were killing the grass outside. That's the thing that makes Kansas special. Yeah, no, no doubt about that, Coach. And, and I can tell you, uh, and, and Landon, I don't know how much more time we have with Coach, but, you know, i just like to say say something uh, more than a question. It's more of a comment. In fact, it's being a parent of a child that was recruited by, you know, your staff and, and, and Coach. i just like to say that, you know, one of the things that I always respected uh, was the, the fact that, that you guys were always very honest with us throughout the entire recruiting process. And so there was never any sugar coating. There was never any, you know, like, oh, you you gonna play? You gonna? It was it was straight up honesty, even to the point where it was like, hey, uh, I don't remember the kid's name. I think it was Char Charkuski or whatever his name. Hey, was yeah. Caleb, yeah, right. Caleb, yeah, yeah. Caleb. It was like, oh well, you know, I think this is. I think we got this one. I think we got this one. We're like, okay, well, you know, and he starts taking other visits, and all of a sudden, it's like, well, Caleb decided to go a different direction. So, are you still interested? Mm -hmm. uh, but even, but again, the whole time. You know, it's for such a high level, people always want to say that there's something, you know, behind the scenes or something bad's going on and stuff. I can tell you as a, as a parent that everything was always on the up and up and coach was always very upfront. Hey, when you come here, there's not a given path. When you come here, you're going to have to work your tail off. And every year we're going to recruit over you just so you know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I remember having that conversation with Landon, like, are you ready for this? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not a given. Uh, and, and Landon wanted to have that challenge. And, and the thing that uh, I was always happy with is the fact that, you know, um, who knew what was going to happen, but uh, coach saw what I knew for all those years. And in, in Landon, the fact that Landon was willing, it's the reason why it's called the glue guys. Landon was willing to do what it took, uh, even if it was all the dirty stuff, Mm -hmm. Right. Not dirty player, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. To 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 for success for that team. And and even if he scored two points, as long as he had double digits rebounds, he yeah. was OK. <laughs> so uh, Let me tell you the thing that's great about Landon. I know Landon doesn't want us to talk about him too much. I know. <laughs> the thing was great about him. He was absolutely the best low post defender I have ever coached in my life. 
He's, a, he's the best low puck that did not block shots. Landon could, you, we could say to Landon, Landon, he's yours. You got him. And he would say, I need no help. I got him. And that oh, I hated double teams. Better. I hate yes. I hated the and double that made team. our team better. And yes. and the key, like, think about this. The one thing that coach does in recruiting, he does say that I am going to recruit over you. I'm always trying to recruit the best. But he also says, if you've been here two or three years and a freshman beat you out, that's your fault. Yep. That ain't my fault. That's your fault. And the one thing about Landon that was great with that team, and I still to this day thought we should have won the national championship when Landon played with Josh Jackson. Uh, that team was terrific. We just played bad one friggin' day. We played bad one friggin' day, and that's all it takes in the NCAA tournament. But I would say this. Landon was a guy that all the guys in the locker room respected what he did, and I remember Coach put it to a vote. We were trying to decide how we were going to – you know, we were playing a lot of different big guys, and we said, hey, we got to play the one guy. Who's the one guy to play? And all of his t- – teammates that were starters all picked him they all picked him and said coach we play better our team is better because of landon and then we took off from nick you remember that don't you landon i i I do remember that and that was something that you know gave me a ton of confidence and um you know i remember wayne right after that conversation they came up to me um (laughs) and it was before the next game and they were the ones that really instilled that just keep it simple thing because they came up and they were like listen you have we trust you we 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 want you out there just go out there and do those things that you're comfortable with doing and that you know you could do well on a high level and uh we'll be a good team I remember going out there and and it made everything no matter the magnitude of the game uh anything it just kept it simple for me and the, you know I I would go out there and I would do you know uh what I knew I could do at the highest level and focus on things that I knew the other guys on the court weren't focused on. They were focused on scoring and different stuff like that. I was out there thinking, oh, I want to get every rebound possible, possible, set the best screens I can set. You know, I, I would, so that made me, you know, uh, feel good and happy about it. And so I, I you know, I was really, um, you know, happy when, when they recognized that and, uh, you know, and came to you guys and said that. So, um, yeah, that, that was yeah. that was awesome. I'll but give, before we let you go, coach, go ahead. Let me give you a great compliment. We were talking to a coach the other day that coached at Iowa State, and he said to us, the one thing that was unique about Kansas is that whenever they needed a big basket in the game, coach would go to Landon Lucas. We'd run eye, net, whatever it was, yeah, yeah. and he said, and we knew it. We kept saying, they're going to throw it to the big guy. And we would do that. So that's a great compliment. Well, what's interesting about that is, you know, we I wasn't known as a big scorer and whatnot, but what I could do was get really good position. And not only for myself to maybe, you know, get a bucket, but also for somebody else uh, to, to get a bucket if uh, the defense were to collapse or whatnot. So uh, I, I do take that as a compliment. I, I do, and I appreciate that. But uh, but before we let you go, I, I got one more question for you. We uh, We're doing a top five college or not even college all sports rivalries of all time and uh, right after you get off my dad and I and I want to know what is your number one rivalry in all of sports it could be any sport any era just just a rivalry that you know that's just they hate each other Celtics Lakers that's it. Yeah, I like that. And I'm, one. <laughs> and I'm a Boston guy. I'm a Boston guy. So, ah, oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, coach, I appreciate you coming on and talking with us. Uh, it was a great conversation. Good luck this weekend. We'll be watching and uh, hopefully we'll have you on again sometime. That'd be great. Hey, you get your butt back here. We need to see you too. I will. I will for sure. Okay. See you, stud. All right. All right. Well, All right. that was awesome. Yes, it was good to to talk with him again. It's been a while since uh, since I've had a chance yeah. to. And uh, well, you talked about uh, you know all the rebounding and stuff that you did, and and I almost brought up the fact that you never did beat my rebound record. Um, and but I thought you know that that might be a little you bit know much, I did so I did, but it was in overtime. So you said yeah, it but it doesn't it, was, it, yeah, it doesn't count because I, I, I did it in forty minutes. It was nineteen rebounds, right? So mine was eighteen. 18 and I got 19, but yes. it was against I- Iowa State. But I think in that overtime, I only got like one rebound. Well, that's all it took. 
That's all it took. Uh, anyways. So, so anyway, I, I, I just wanted to let you know I, res, I refrained and restrained oh, my myself goodness. from bringing, bringing that up. Um, but, well, I appreciate uh, that. But how, how about that compliment about the end of the games? Most people don't know that, that there was actually quite a bit of uh, plays that were drawn up uh, for me. I remember the one that I liked the most uh, was we would call it I. We ran it against Kansas State, and this was after I had a pretty good game. The, the player of the week game where I had 15 oh, and 17. Uh, so TCU. TCU. So the next game yeah. was Kansas State. And so I was feeling myself. I had like 18 and 12 coming into the last few minutes. And uh, he called that I play uh, and, it, and it led to an and one. But it was just such a design play where, you know, you would just bring all the guards over and through and then duck yeah. in. Um, and, you know, I for me, you know, you got Frank. You got, you know, Devontae, you got Josh, Fee, all these guys. I'm like, you want to run the play for me? <laughs> like, all right, cool. I mean, that's fine with me. But, uh, but what it really did more than anything was uh, in most games, it would draw the, the defense in or, or set up for somebody else to score. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I always thought that was interesting that, you know, it, it, did, uh, it, it did come to me sometimes towards the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is the bigs, Come on, we deserve love too, right? I mean, come of on course. now, right? And it's like we do the stuff and we get the ball out to, to the guards and all those shooters and, and all that. And every once in a while, it's nice to, uh, you know, to get our hands on the ball in a position to be able to do something with it. So I think that's a testament to to your time there. And, uh, and again, I was, you know, complimenting uh, Coach Roberts and, you know, and the staff about – how they handle the recruiting process, but, but really, um, you know, your the way you play and played was, is unique. And, uh, and so it, it really takes a coach understanding um, your strong points and how you can help um, a club because you're, you're not going to come out, um, you know, leading the break with the ball and, and stopping and popping from half court. Cause that's, that's just not, not your game. So, uh, but anyway, it was, uh, I will tell you one thing. I do miss those, those days, uh, of watching you play. It, my heart, my heart is okay. is better. Cause it, I felt like yeah, I was having stressful. a heart attack every single time you're on the, on the court. But, uh, but yeah, I do miss, uh, miss those games. I do as well. But, uh, so we're going to bring on Donovan, but before we do that, I want to go ahead and go through this, uh, this top five list. Cause I'm curious sure. what, what you came up with. I know last time you only came up with the top three. So. I clearly won the first one, but I want to know all right. what is your top five all-time sports rivalries? Yeah, let me hear them. All right, so again, definition, in my opinion, definition of rivalry is that both teams have to. Be, it has to matter, right? Both teams have to be good, so it, it doesn't matter if, if one team's good and one's not. So that precluded a couple couple uh, rivalries. Uh, and the other thing, the other thing, it has to be about the passion uh, with the fan base. So. To me, uh, I'm going to do the uh, David Letterman reverse order kind of deal. So I've got number five, Yankees, Red Sox. I mean, I think it's just classic in baseball. Um, and uh, and obviously, Yankees have been good for a long time. But Red Sox had some down years. So that's why I, I put them down at number uh, five. Number four, I uh, put Ali smoking Joe Frazier. Um, so those are two uh, guys that are synonymous with, with each other and, and, and excellence. Um, number three, I had... Um, uh, Duke, North Carolina and basketball. Um, obviously you can't, you, you can't play those games without understanding kind of that, that, uh, the, the impact and the rivalry between those two. And they're like, I don't know, 30 minutes from each other or something. So, uh, that, that is part of it as well. Number two, just like coach Roberts talked about Lakers Celtics. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a Lakers fan from Southern California. I grew up a Lakers fan. So I remember the magic Johnson, Larry Bird, you know, Dennis Johnson, you know, days. And so to, for me, that was number two, but you're going to probably be surprised by my number one. Um, you know, you might think Ohio state, Michigan, that might be number one, but I want to tell you it's Auburn, Alabama and college football. And the reason why I said that is because there probably isn't a level of passion um, in any other sport at any other time than it is with, Alabama fans versus Auburn fans because you want to piss off an Alabama fan or you want to piss off piss off an Auburn fan go up to an Auburn fan and say roll tide they'll want to cut you they will want to cut you 
I mean, and that's not, not just all oh, shucks. That's not fair. It's like you said something about their mama. Uh, and so mm-hmm. I'm telling you, Auburn, Alabama fans, uh, that, that to me is the number one rivalry in all of sports. I like it. I like that list. And then it's, uh, there's a few similar, similar ones than, than I have, but I'm going to start, uh, and I'll start with five as well. And, um, my number five is the same as yours, the Yankee Red Sox. I mean, uh, the, the Yankees, um, uh, are the team that if, if I'm going to watch baseball, I'll usually watch them. And then that game is one that if, you know, I'll, I'll tune into. And so, uh, I don't watch much baseball, but if they're playing, I'll watch it. That's a good one. Uh, number four is the Duke, uh, North Carolina. Um, I think at one point I was watching a few years ago and throughout the series, they were like tied in total points scored. Uh, like throughout the whole series, they were, they were tied. And it just shows how every game, no matter if one is ranked 20th and other is two, yeah. um, it, it's always going to be a good game. It's always going to be a close game. And uh, so that's a fun one. Number three, I'm going to go with the one that's coming up this Saturday, Kansas, Missouri. And, and I saw that one firsthand so I can kind of, uh, you know, speak on it. Even though I don't know the history as much, I saw that one game. And like I said to Coach Roberts, um, you instantly feel the, the animosity and the rivalry from all the years prior as soon as that game you know, starts to, to get started and the crowd gets into it. And um, what a way to end that series before that long hiatus that they had with that T-Rob block and stuff. So I'm going to have yeah. to go with that for three. Uh, number two, I'm going to go a little, uh, you know, off with this one. I'm going to go to the UFC and do uh, Daniel Cormier versus John Jones. And for me, I'm a huge UFC fan. And that one, the reason I loved it so much was because a lot of times you'll get two fighters and they'll kind of play up a show uh, for each other to sell a fight. These two guys hated each other so much. And the funniest <laughs> clip was the clip when their mics got left on, on yeah. ESPN and they let them talk to each other. And that just shows how, you know, two guys who are about to go into a octagon where they close the cage and let you just hash it out just hated each other and so like you know you're ali one that's boxing there's limits and stuff ufc you could you know do just about anything and so i i really like that one um and then number one i'm gonna go with coach rob on this one the lakers celtics and the reason that i you know uh picked this one for number one is not only because you know because of you i was a lakers fan growing up so you know i got a little bit of that but when i really noticed that this is legit was during the summer league um, when I was with the Celtics. Oh, our yeah. very first game in Las Vegas was against Lonzo Ball's rookie year and the Lakers. And let me tell you, I've been in a lot of great atmospheres that was up there. And it's crazy to think a NBA summer league game, you know, could be hyped like that. But they yeah. so I mean, that place was packed. And it was we were running out for warm ups and just, you know, not even like, you know, in college, you got like coordinated, you got bands and all this stuff. It was just fans sitting there at an NBA game that were just excited for the game, you know, and so yeah. that was fun. Um, and being a part of it and to say, you know, I played in a, one of one of the games. I know it was a summer league game, but I got a little bit of the feeling of that rivalry. So I had to go number one uh, Lakers Celtics on that one. So I think we're uh, similar in a few ways. We went off a, a little bit. I think, actually, I think our lists are almost exactly like except for the uh, the the. Cormier won, uh, but yeah, you know, so pretty, pretty close, pretty close. There's some good ones yep. out there. There was, I, I, I liked your list a little better this time. You're getting better at it. Come on. We've, we've made it. Like you said in the beginning, we've made it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, bring on our last guest of the day, um, Donovan and uh, chat with him a little bit. What's up, Donovan? Welcome What's in. What's up, Landon? How you doing? I'm doing pretty well now. Now, KU fans, you're pretty uh, recognizable to a lot of them because there was a period in time where you went viral for your passion playing the drums. And I know a lot of Kansas fans were, were loving, you know, uh, everything that you gave to that band and gave it a life and stuff. And so I wanted to bring you on this show and, and get to know a little bit more about you and, and, uh, and your background and stuff. So welcome in. And uh, I, I want to get started by giving you the floor a little bit to tell us you know, what led you to becoming this, you know, uh, KU band member and, and the drummer for, for Kansas? 
Yeah, um, first and foremost, uh, my name is Donovan Miller. Um, I'm a professional drummer here in Kansas City. Um, what led me to that moment, um, I was a part of the marching band at KU for two years. And um, this was back in 2018, so the start of the 2018-2019 season. And, you know, I'm a, I was a jazz major at KU, so I was playing drums already. Um, as a part of my degree. So I wanted an opportunity to um, just do something a little different because, you know, the jazz school is very small and it's a very niche community. So, um, you know, I wanted to play in another area. So I decided to um, join marching band and it was really cool. Love the marching band at KU, love them. They are like family to me. Um, and they really got me started um, in joining the athletic part of the music community community at KU. So um, after that, it was an audition process to join the basketball band, um, which is an incredible honor if you make basketball band, especially the men's band, because as you know, Landon and you too, uh, Richard, um, it's 16,000 people in there. So playing in that building, playing in the field house already, and then on top of that, it's most of the time it's a packed house in there. So that's just a big opportunity and not to mention just playing on TV, all of that. It's a huge, huge opportunity. And like the drummer chair is such a big part of that because it's front and center and everybody sees you. So I know I wanted to make my mark on KU and that the legacy that that chair holds. There are a lot of great drummers that have played um, for KU basketball. So I wanted to, you know, put my little stamp on it. And then the moment came I think this was back in February of 2019. And that moment came. I didn't know that that was going to happen. Um, I was just told I got the green light to go crazy. And what we call it, we call it big drums. So that's the moment where you guys are coming back. The team's coming back on the floor. And, you know, we got to get the crowd energized and everything. So that's the drummer's time to just go crazy. So I just went into a zone and... You know, I can't sometimes I close my eyes when I play, but at that moment I had to watch just to make sure that the ref didn't uh, give me a tech because we want sometimes when you overplay, you can get a tech. I don't know. It's not my fault. So I just um, so I just made sure that, you know, I was watching the ref just to make sure when the ball was handed and the ball was inbounded that I was on time and I stopped in time. So that's where the attempt, the intense eyes came in and all of that. And then there's a camera to my left. So I know where that camera is every time. So that's that look at the end of that video. Um, so yeah, it was just such a cool moment. And I don't think I would, I, I, it started everything for me. That whole video, that whole moment in time was just the start and that was the beginning. And now I'm what KU people and get the KU community calls a legend. I don't know, <laughs> it's really cool. It was a really cool moment. Well, I, I love uh, seeing the video uh, of you playing up there. But, you know, when, La when Landon was uh, was just a little kid, so I can say this stuff because I'm his pop. Uh, yeah. But uh, when, you know, he was little, from the time he could basically walk, you know, I had the little the little Nerf hoop and he's dunking it. I have pictures of him dunking on it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And he was always around basketball um, yeah. you know, because I played it professionally. So he was – basketball has been part of his life from day one. So right. what, what about – either music or drumming for you? Was it like, was there like a little a couple sticks when you were just a little thing or like, how did you get introduced to that from the beginning? Yeah. Um, so I started playing drums at the age of three. Um, my mom and my dad bought me my first drum set. Yeah. I was about three or four years old. Um, I was playing in church. My dad um, was my first teacher. He taught me the real, real basics. And then um because my whole family is pretty much musical. Um, my brother and I both play drums and we all sing. So music's been a part of our family since I can remember. Um, but yeah, I brought my first jump, or my parents bought my first jump set at the age of three. And I've been playing ever since. So it's been, That's a, awesome. it's been a crazy long time. That's awesome. I, I got a question for you. Um, I have a lot of songs that I, I loved, uh, you know, that you guys would play 
pregame. I mean, for me, you have that pregame like playlist that they would throw on that we would put together, you know. But mm-hmm. then once the once the band got started and the and the fans started coming, in, that's when you knew it was game time. And so, you know, yeah. I have a few favorite ones, but I want to ask you, what was your favorite song to play? Or your favorite, you know, whatever, just leading up to the game in the game. What what was your favorite one to play? Yeah, um, I would say we do a mix of songs. It's the two songs by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, one's called In the Stone, and then mm-hmm. the other is uh, Africano. And we, we God, match those. What, how does that one go? That, it those, goes. Uh, uh, the, God, uh, I know which one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Yeah. And yeah, then we I go like that into, one. Uh, Africano, and those are. Those two always get us going and it gets the crowd going. Those are the most, I would say that's the most popular part of our pregame warm-up. So what what was the one that you guys would play right before we would get started? It'd be like na 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 Oh uh cashmere. Yeah. That's when that's when Coach Self comes out. Yeah, uh, that's the geez, one. Coach Self gets the, gets the, I want that one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that those are something, man, just that pre the whole pregame is just crazy because it's just us and we get our time before the team comes out on the floor. So, yeah, it's a good time. So, so you you got a pretty good va- vantage point of the court from where mm-hmm. you're sitting, right? So, You've been in there uh, for some pretty big games. I know they got a big one this this weekend. But what yeah. can you think of the best game you saw while you were there? Wow, I mean, I can I can think of a couple. Um, I think it was the game clinching 2019 when we won the conference championship. When we when we clinched it, that was one of my favorites. I can't remember the opponent off the top of my head. Um, but I mean, obviously the one, the one versus West Virginia, um, that was the moment. That's what created the whole thing. Um, and we were up pretty big at the time that that happened. So it was just, you know, it was time for me, you know, to make my place while the team was already blowing West Virginia out. So I was just like, hey, let's just have some fun while we're here. <laughs> so. Yeah, definitely was, those two was, games for sure. What was that like after after that game? You know, you come back, you, you see your phone or whatnot. Like, you know, were people messaging you? Did you? I mean, I, I instantly, you know, saw you all over social media and all over mm-hmm. Twitter. Kansas fans loved it. So, like, what was that like? You know, after that game, uh, you know, coming back to to reality. Yeah, I mean, I found out as soon as it happened on while I was playing someone in the band told me that I was on ESPN like immediately. So I I looked for a quick second before, like I had a little bit of time to look and my phone was already blowing up um, within minutes. So I can't remember how many hits or how many views it hit like on that first day, but it was upwards in all socials for Bleacher Report and ESPN. It was at least, 100 200,000 oh. views within an hour or so yeah the phone my phone was absolutely blowing up after so, that so what are you up to now what's what's the future like for you yeah i'm in Kansas City um i live here i have a band um here called Glass Bandit um and it's a funk pop rock band and we're playing all in Kansas City we play in Lawrence all the time so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And it's been an incredible ride. That's awesome. I, I got to finish uh, by uh, asking you this question. If there was any band in the history, uh, what what band would you most want to play drums for and why? Wow. That's, there's so many good bands. Um, I think off rip, I would say Earth, Wind and Fire. And it's because just their legacy, their music's so iconic. They're one of the biggest, I would say they were like the originators of like funk bands, like funk pop, like going into the pop realm. They were like the band um, in the 70s. So I would say Earth, Wind & Fire 100%. Love it. Love it. Awesome. 
That's great. Well, I appreciate you coming on and talking with us, um, uh, Donovan. I hope that you, uh, you know, have a successful career with this new band. I'll make sure to be following you, and uh, I appreciate everything you brought to the school of Kansas and and the intensity that you brought to to the the band and the drums. I loved it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. I really do appreciate it. Best of luck to you. Of course, man. Thank you so much. It's impressive All right, stuff. Well, uh, that is, that is. He was uh, very fun to watch during his time there at, at Kansas. And so I wanted to get him on. I forgot to mention that that was the uh, From the Stand segment that we had started. We we did yes. a fan the first time. You know, I figured we'd switch it up a little bit this time, bring in uh, somebody from the band uh and uh, we may have some more uh, variations of that moving forward, but uh, that was that was a fun one. I was, it was nice talking to him and talking to Coach Roberts today. Yeah, no question. I mean, I, I've been around basketball a long time, and coach, talk, talking to Coach, uh, that was I, yeah, I love that part. But I can tell you, I have zero experience when it comes to music, uh, other than just listening <laughs> to it. So uh, for me, it was uh, I, I mean, I do enjoy when somebody's passionate like like that and. And they they're artistic, you know, and, and they are creative that way. That that's so different than anything I've ever done. So I, I always enjoy, uh, you know, having having a conversation with them because you can you can just tell the passion uh, when they're just speaking about their craft. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, uh, big week coming up uh, Saturday. Yeah. We have the, the the Missouri game, and uh, Sunday you have. Uh, uh, do or die in fantasy football. So good luck uh, in your, yeah, in your final dead. game trying to make the play. Are you? Uh, there's no yeah, chance. I'm out. Yeah, there's no chance. There's no oh, chance. Oh, I thought you so. still could win and have some people lose. So your your season's over with. I, pretty much, yeah. Because because I even if I tie it, I'd have I don't have enough overall points. So uh, yeah, it's, I, think right, it's, well, I think it's over with. That, that's okay. I'm I'm all right with it. I've come to grips with it. My therapist is okay. Uh, you know, and he understands what, what I'm going through. So, uh, no, we're, I'm good. All right. Well, um, enjoy your weekend and, uh, we'll be back again, uh, next weekend with a new episode. Sounds good. Look forward to it. Right.